Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, December 3rd, 2015. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, what you're not being told about the San Bernardino shooting. Then, the founder of the Weather Channel on the sham of man-made climate change. And how the terrorists stole Christmas. That's next. I think we will eventually get some indication on what that dispute was about. Uh, this was a holiday party. Uh, maybe it was called a Christmas party. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many potential triggers here. Sheep can't rebel. They're sheep. They submit. They fall. Will you fall? They think you will fall. As they perch on our chest smothering us, strangling us in the night? Or will we become aware of the attack and surge with the power that God gave us to resist? Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. In the aftermath of yesterday's tragic shooting in San Bernardino, California, gun control advocates immediately responded by calling for strict universal background checks and, of course, more gun control, even though California already has some of the strongest gun laws in the entire nation. You cannot open carry in California or you, you cannot have a concealed handgun something that the liberals are very proud of, by the way. And it basically left the victims of yesterday's shooting defenseless, as it is no secret that these cowardly shooters, well, they usually... single out soft targets and gun-free zones. Meanwhile, the mainstream media was quick to blame right-wing extremists. CNN interviewed FBI Assistant Director Tom Fuentes, whose first impression was that the terror attack was probably carried military style gear with long weapons, military style, uh, type assault rifles, going into a facility and attacking a government function. If it's county employees. having some type of a banquet there, that takes on more of a domestic militia group, an anti-government domestic militia group wanting to attack the government than it does international. ...terrorism where they're usually on a suicide mission. So they were quick to blame right-wing extremists, but we now know that the terrorist attack was probably carried out by radical Muslims. Leanne McAdoo's in the Situation Room with more on the California shooters. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Darren. Well, here's what we know so far about the massacre that took place in San Bernardino, California yesterday. The shooters were husband and wife, Saeed Farouk and Tashfeen Malik. Now, Farouk worked as a health inspector for the San Bernardino County Health Department for five years. His co-workers describe him as a devout Muslim, but not one who really would talk about his religion at all. In fact, they said it seemed like he was living the American dream. Uh, a few years ago, he traveled to Saudi Arabia and he brought home a wife. And then, of course, a baby soon followed. Well, it turns out Farouk and his wife left their six month old baby daughter with his mother. And uh, they said, you know, we're going to go for a doctor's point, appointment. But in fact, they were actually going to the office Christmas party to carry out this massacre. Now, 14 people died. More than 20 were wounded. Uh, the police say that shooters were wearing tactical gear. They had two handguns, two assault rifles, 1,600 rounds of ammo. And of course, they say that there had to be some degree of planning because they also left three explosive devices that were rigged to a remote controlled toy car. They left that inside of the Inland Regional Center before they fled in an SUV. And they apparently had some sort of an equipment failure uh, with the remote control. So they weren't actually able to detonate this device. Now, uh, the suspects also reportedly threw pipe bombs at police uh, before we saw that standoff there where the suspects were taken out by the authorities. Now, today, the authorities were able to check their home and the police essentially said that the suspect's home was a bomb factory. They found 12 pipe bombs, other tools to create IEDs and thousands more rounds of ammo. And the police say that they still do not have a motive, uh, but they said based on how well they were equipped, they're speculating that they were intending to carry out uh, planning more carnage. Now, uh, law enforcement, uh, they tell CNN that Farouk was apparently radicalized and he was in touch with more than one, more than one terrorism subject whom the FBI was already investigating for international terrorism. And they say that these people were communicating via phone and social media. So once again, we have someone the FBI was actively investigating. Now we know the NSA intercepts all of that data that you're making with uh, people who are on foreign soil, especially people who are being actively investigated. So here we're seeing once again, a failure of the surveillance state, but also sort of a failure there with this uh, fake racism that's going around because Darren Neighbors say that they had actually been suspicious in recent weeks. Uh, one neighbor said that he was seeing um, Middle Eastern men coming and going from the house, uh, as well as another neighbor reported uh, that she had seen a lot of work going on in the mother's garage, as well as a lot of packages arriving in the mail. And both of these neighbors said that they wanted to report something to the authorities but they didn't want to be racist. racist. That's right. And as usual, Barack Obama, he's tiptoeing all over this or all around this. You know, he's saying that right, right now he says it could be terrorism, mm -hmm. right? But, but you and I both know he will never admit that it's radical Muslim terrorists. Right now he says it could be terrorism, but he thinks it's more than likely disgruntled employees. Right. Exactly. And we know if these if these shooters had been white, of course, it would have been that narrative there with the domestic terrorism. But you'll recall uh, it was workplace grievances that apparently caused a recent Muslim convert to behead one of his co-workers and stab another last year in Oklahoma. That was Alton Nolan. And there they said, you know, workplace grievances. Darren. Well, you got that right. And in this case, workplace grievance had premeditated jihad written all over it. Let's just call it what it is, because we can. At the bare minimum, the coordinated massacre that just took place in San Bernardino, California, was a jihad, as was the 2009 massacre that occurred at Fort Hood. But the media spun that one too, calling it workplace violence. ABC later reported, attorneys for the victims of the 2009 Fort Hood massacre said that the alleged shooter's admission that he gunned down his countrymen to defend the Taliban proves that the assault was a terrorist attack and not, as the government had implied, workplace violence. But the bought and paid for media, its handlers and the Obama administration won't let up on their warping of reality. So we've received word that this shooting was not at a Planned Parenthood, so that's at least uh, some perspective on where the shooting may be taking place. Obviously with what happened- Is there a Planned Parenthood nearby? Is that- uh, there, That may be the case. Just Within minutes of the shooting, a deluge of leftists on Twitter immediately blamed the massacre on white people, conservatives, Donald Trump supporters, the NRA, the Second Amendment, 
pro-lifers and men in general. After the shooters were named as an Arab man and woman, progressives suddenly lost all interest in the story. While media would have us all shelter in place in gun-free zones to be picked off like scared little rabbits, gun sales skyrocketed days before the shooting during Black Friday, breaking record background checks. And the whole debacle stinks of a false flag funded by the mysterious 50 plus billion dollars Americans blindly throw at the avalanche of liberty devouring alphabet agencies illegally surveilling and manipulating the public consensus to keep the big brother machine rolling. The inland regional center that was attacked in San Bernardino, California had been conducting active shooter drills for months. The LA Times writes, at first, Dorothy Vong assumed it was a drill, just like all the others at her work at the Inland Regional Center, where she's a nurse. The staff works with clients and parents of clients who are sometimes angry. They have active shooter drills every month or so. The devout Muslim man and mail-order Pakistani bride that unleashed the coordinated attack at the Inland Regional Center had been creating remote-controlled bombs in their home predetermined preparation to commit violence on a large scale by two radicalized Muslims. That's right, radicalized. Call it what it is. CNN reports Syed Rizwan Farouk, one half of the couple behind the San Bernardino shooting massacre, was apparently radicalized and in touch with people being investigated by the FBI for international terrorism. Law enforcement officials said on Thursday, not a workplace grievance, Washington. This has jihad written all over it. In my humble opinion, we are reaching a point eclipsing any talk of impeachment or the evocation of the 25th Amendment, considering President Obama's sanity or lack thereof. We may have arrived at a point when Frank J. Larkin, Sergeant at Arms and doorkeeper of the U.S. Senate, being the only officer that can arrest the Manchurian candidate currently quarterbacking an American Jihad in the United States, must dust off the handcuffs and enter the Oval Office. John Bound for InfoWars.com. Now, InfoWars reporter and combat veteran Joe Biggs is smack dab in the middle of a nationwide investigation into Islamic compounds in operation right here, right now, inside the United States. And Biggs, you're tracking down six, maybe more, uh, potential radical jihadist training camps within the United States. I mean, we're talking right, right here in our own backyards. What have you uncovered so far, and where is the, what's the next phase of the investigation? Well, first off, the Obama administration is purposely leaving the borders wide open. They're allowing these people to come in here, these radicalized people. As we saw yesterday, the attack in San Bernardino, where these guys were radicalized. They went to Saudi Arabia, yet that didn't set off any flags. And yet the government's more worried about Josh and I going to Islamburg and trying to expose the fact that these places can be manipulated and or, uh, what's a good word, uh, infiltrated by these refugees because it's a very quiet, secluded place in the Catskill Mountains. You know, we had a chance to speak with the mayor. We had a chance to speak with the sheriff there, the uh, chief of police. And they said, you know, from the outside looking in, they seem like a peaceful people. But, you know, at the end of the day, we really don't know what's going on inside of there. And he said that's where some of the concern comes from, the fact that they handle everything internally, basically with a Sharia law. So we don't really know what is going on in there, but we do have reports of people saying they've heard gunfire, explosions, things like that in that area. There's a lot of people in that area that are apparently concerned about it, and you have a lot of people that really aren't that worried about it. So it's kind of up in the air. I can't really say yes or no, but I can definitely say that Due to the secrecy, it's definitely a place that could be infiltrated by extremists. Now, there are a couple other spots that we're going to stop on this first leg of America. Um, I'm not going to say the next location we're going to. We're going to have a few places that we're going to cover in the next few days, and then we're going to head down south to another spot and just keep moving around. And we'll take a break for the holidays, and then we're going to get back on it again and start hitting up some of the spots on the West Coast. Well, let's talk about uh, some more about Islamburg because I thought it was interesting. You approached the compound.